Our next inductee won basketball letters in 1979, 80, and 81. In 79, he was a starter on the NIT championship team in the 1980 and 1981 Big Ten championship teams. He was MVP of the Indiana Classic in 1981. During the NCAA tournament in 1981, he was the MVP of the regional final and national semifinal games. He was the starting power forward on the 81 NCAA championship, national championship team. He was also on the NCAA all-tournament team. Four months after winning the national championship, a tragic car accident left him paralyzed and ended his basketball career. He was named an honorary All-American by the U.S. Basketball Writers Association in 1982. In 1989, the United States Basketball Writers Association awarded Landon the most courageous award. Before we bring him up, I'd like to bring up Bob Hamill, who has a little bit of a special presentation to pass along. Landon, just, just today, I uh, got a letter that uh, the author asked to be read, and I want you to know that uh, one sentence into this letter, you're going to know it's authentic. <laughs> Landon, for over two years as a member of our basketball team, you were a monumental pain in the ass. <laughs> you were a kid with enormous talent. Oh, you had some great moments that helped us win some games and championships. The NIT final game was one of those. But times like that only made more frustrating all of those much more frequent times when you didn't come close to playing to your abilities in a consistent way. I had just about given up on you as a player who could be counted on to play his best in every game. Then I remember the date on February 12, 1981. In our 23rd game of your junior year, we were playing Northwestern at home. Steve Downing and I were going to tell your great parents after the game that we no longer thought you could help our team. Then with nine minutes to go in that Northwestern game with us about 30 points ahead, I finally put you in the game, and you immediately missed a block out and gave up a basket. <laughs> of course I took you out of the game, but for some reason I don't understand, I put you right back in. For the next eight and a half minutes, you did it. You played to the full extent of your abilities, and it was a joy to watch. After the game, Steve and I met with you and your dad and mother. Our original plan had been to draft a letter that would make you eligible for the NBA draft. After the way you played, before we brought up the letter, I asked you a question. Landon, what keeps you from playing that way all the time? You said, I don't know, coach, but I would like the chance to try. From our next practice through the final game of the NCAA tournament, <coughs> You were the best player in the country. Our team could. Our team could not have and would not have won the national championship without the way you played. You did a complete turnaround, not only as a player, but also as a student. I have never seen anyone make that complete a change in his approach to life. Then came your summertime accident on the way to Kings Island. Only through great will and determination did, did you even survive. Your life was changed forever, and you, never, you would never experience what you were going to be as a basketball player, the best of the country. But what you did become, Landon, is the most, <coughs> excuse me, Amazing human being, the greatest example of dealing with and overcoming adversity that I have ever known. There is no player 
And of all the great, great kids that I have coached, that I respect more than you. My favorite moment as a coach was seeing you become the player I thought you could be. My worst moment as a coach was learning that you would not have a senior season. You also gave me my most unforgettable and meaningful moment on a basketball court. It was at one of our senior days. You had come down to be part of it. I always appreciated that. And you were in the, your wheelchair on the car, court behind me. When on the spur of the moment, I asked all the former IU players in the stands that day to stand. Then I thought of you. Looked back and needled you, as always. Landon, aren't you going to stand up? You gave me <clears throat> that great big smile and said, Coach, I am standing in my heart. That I'll never forget. Congratulations for this wonderful recognition and honor, Landon. You deserve to be up on that wall as a continuing reminder of a great young basketball player whose future changed in a minute. And after a lot of tears and family time, I'm sure, just said, well, that's the way it's going to be. I'll make the best of it. And you have. Bob Knight. Thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful that, you, you know, Bob said some nice things, but I don't get any highlights. <laughs> they don't have no Landon Turner highlights up there? Or me shoot the jump in the corner or nothing? Or a jump hook? Hey, um... I just kind of want to thank, you know, you know, when Randall L and everybody thank their, their wives and everything. I was married twice, one for four months and one for six months. And I want to thank them that they let me divorce them. <laughs> and another thing, Coach Knight called you, Randall, he called you Randy? I can't say what he called me. It's not good. It's not for you all's ears. <laughs> but anyway, first and foremost, I would like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because without him, <laughs> because with, without him, there's nothing that I could do. That, I mean, I'm nothing without him. Uh, he uh, has blessed me so much, and, uh, and I appreciate him, and I pray, praise him every day. I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much. Second, I would like to thank my wonderful parents who, who are sickly and they're not able to, wasn't able to be here today, but um, they raised me to be a positive Christian young man and, um, and through their perseverance and hard work and watching my father go to Ford Motor Company every day, you know, taught me how to work hard. And uh, my mother and father, I tell you, they, they are like angels. They are just a blessing from, from Jesus again because I think they're the best parents that anyone could ever have. And, and I love my parents. And I know you're at home. I want to say I love you. I want to love you. <laughs> I want to thank my brother, Larson. Just wanted to stand up for a quick second. It's my brother, Larson. Everyone used to say he had more skills than me, and in, in some ways he did have more skills because my left hand, you know, when I dribble was kind of weak. But when I watched him dribble, you know, he dribbled with the left and finger roll with the left. I'm like, oh, he's kind of nasty. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Lars, I just want to say, you know, thank you for letting me beat you in electric football and, and everything and playing on the basketball court. You know, we, when my father first built our basketball court, we had an actual tree like at the free throw line. 
So when I'm trying to blow, when I'm trying to block his shot, he would like use the tree as, as a big old pick, you know. <laughs> but but you know he was very competitive, and you know he helped, he helped me with my competitive spirits also. And I think because of him and my, the way my parents raised me and my competitive edge, that's why I'm here today accepting this wonderful Hall of Fame award. Thank you, Larson. Love you, man. And I also want to thank my, my beautiful nieces right here, Lauren and Kayla. I just want to say thank you for coming here. And I just want to say I love you. and Thank you very much for being here. There are so many people I want to thank. I mean, all through the years, I mean, this has been, whoa, what, 30-something years since I, you know, Ray, you got, what, 30 years? You, you was inducted last year, and I never, I, I never thought that I was going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. When I started playing basketball, I mean, I remember playing at Douglas Park in Indianapolis. My father, you know, would give me the basketball. I mean, I couldn't even hardly throw the ball up at the rim. But my father said, hey, if you want to get on those swings, you better hit a shot. Hey, I wanted, me and my brother wanted to get on the swings. So I throw the ball, huh? So, right, so, you know, he would hit first. But I just throw the ball up there, and then I find, as soon as, I, as soon as that ball went to the nest, I run to the swings, run to the swings. You know, when I played basketball, you know, in school one ten in, in, in tech high school, I never thought about playing in the hall, you know, being in the Hall of Fame or anything like that. The only thing I was thinking about is winning and kicking other people's butt, you know. I wanted to dunk on you. I wanted to block your shot. I didn't want you to get nothing. I mean, I'm just competitive. I mean, if we play marbles right now, I'm going I'm to try my best to beat you. You know, that's just me. I'm just a competitive person. But, you know, I think that... Uh, with all that said, you know, it's, it's just a blessing that I'm here today. And it's just so many people that I want to thank. I mean, I want to thank, of course, the professors. You know? <laughs> and Professor Wiggins is over there. I want to thank him. I mean, I used to go to his class. I used to go to his class. And I mean, he, he was like Richard Pryor, a, prof a, a Professor Richard Pryor. I mean, he was funny and and, and at the same time, he would, he would spit that knowledge in your mind and in your head, and, and he was just so fun. I just want to say thank you, Professor Wiggins, and thank you for being involved with the basketball program and, and do, doing what you do. And your lovely life, wife, too. She's a beautiful lady. Um, and then I want to thank, uh, most of all, wow, Buzz Kirpius and Anitra House. <laughs> you know, when I was... When I was um, when you come to Indiana University, you come to get your academics. You come to get a, a great education and to play basketball. It's in that order. But me and my little silly self, that wasn't my order. <laughs> my order was, oh, let's go to the Frangie Pangie room and let's get our party on. <laughs> and then let's play some ball. Then, you know, maybe I'll go and do a little studying. But, but because of Buzz Kirpius and Anitra House staying on my butt, um, I really thank them for uh, keeping me eligible because there was many times I was sweating thinking that y'all, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to be on the team. But because of them going over Nietzsche's house and studying and, and her helping me with my grades, I mean, it was, it was, it was, just, it was very wonderful. And, and I just want I, I know Nietzsche's in here somewhere. Could you stand up with Nietzsche so everybody can see? There she is. I don't, I don't know if Buzz Kirpius is here. I know she was here last year. I don't know if Buzz is here, but, but you all helped me out tremendously, and thank you very much. And uh, I, from the bottom of my heart, I just thank you. I also want to thank, uh, I mean, when I was growing up, there was a lot of people that helped me out. Um, there was Ralph Dow. He was the director of Wheeler's Boys Club. I mean, he was almost like my father away from my father. I mean, he would, you know, I was on the, 12, 11-year-old basketball team. He was my coach, and he did a, a fine job with that. And the first time I ever got on an airplane, uh, we went, I was at the Keystone Club at Wheeler's Boys Club, and I got on the airplane, but I just wish Ralph would have told me to chew some gum because I was on the airplane, and my ears was hurting and popping. I was like, wow, what's going on? But it was my first time going to, to, to Disney World and had a, good, had a great experience with that. And, and I just want to say, Ralph Dow's passed now, but I just want to say, your spirit is still in my heart, and I love you, Ralph. And his wife and his stepson is here, too. Could you all stand up? Because Ralph was a great person. There they are over there. And 
And also, it was a friend of mine that, that grew up in our neighborhood. He's, he's a police officer. He's been a police officer ever since I've known him. His name is Brownie Coleman. He was supposed to be here today, but his aunt died. He wasn't able to make it. So, but th this guy used to pick me up all the time and take me all around to the different courts and play ball. But the one thing that he did, he used to take me to the athletic department where all the policemen would lift weights and play ball. And I mean, them, them policemen, I think, you know, those guys used to beat the heck out of me, you know. And I used to go and play jumping. I mean, they would just foul the heck out of me. And I think because of those police officers, you know, uh, it allowed me to be, you know, rough and tough on the basketball court. And, uh, you know, that's how come when someone came to block my shot, you know, they might get a little elbow shiver or something. I got those from the police officers. I just want to say thank you, Brownie. And also my high school coach, and, and, you know, his name is, he's deceased now. His name is Ernie Klein. I just want to thank him because he was, he was always there for me. He used to invite us out to his house and, and do things like that. And, you know, and I think because of him, you know, I was, I was allowed to, to play my game and become a, you know, an All-American and, and everything. And so I want to thank Ernie Klein, too. And I also just want to thank all my friends. My friends came from all over the country uh, to see me and to see this uh, wonder, wondrous uh, award. You know, I just want to thank you for coming here. And, uh, and I look forward. And I want to thank you all for the good times that we used to share. And I look even, I look even more to share more positive good times with you in the future. And thank you all for coming. I, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you very much. Oh man, can I look at the highlights? Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about, some highlights. <laughs> Unfortunately, that last, that last picture of me, I had just fouled out of the, of the <laughs> national championship game. I hated that. I wanted to play the whole game. But anyway, um, when, I announced, when I announced that I was going to end it, matter of fact, before I, before, I go, before I say that, we used to have a ri our, our rivals were Purdue University. We used to hate them. Still. But still, yeah, they say they still hate Purdue. But... <laughs> But I tell you, a good friend of mine who used to play for Purdue, he lives in Atlanta, Georgia, flew all the way here from Atlanta, Georgia to support me in this Hall of Fame, Mr. Walter Jordan right there. See the See, the human side is a lot, lot different than, than, than the school you go to because that guy, I've been going to, I used to go to his basketball games in Fort Wayne and now we just support each other in every way. He's a good person. I love you, man. When I, when I announced that I was going to any university, I received just one letter from a teammate. I mean, no other player wrote me, but one player wrote me. And, uh, and I remember reading the letter. He was excited about that another 6'9 player was coming to play, you know, coming to help him out on the, you know, on the boards and everything. And I remember when he ended the letter, he ended the letter by saying, the other big man. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that dude's pretty cool. And so I just want to say, Ray Tolbert, <laughs> uh, I just want to say, man, thank you for being a friend through all the years, man. You, you, when I needed, there was a time uh, I was in my condo and I accidentally fell on the ground and now I had fallen and couldn't get up. <laughs> I was in my van, I was like stuck in it. 
And then, and then luckily I had a cell phone. I called him and boom, there he was. You know, I think when he got there, I think I was already up, but 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 he was <laughs> But he would no, you you had to help me up, okay. So uh, you know, I just just appreciate you, you know, all the time just being there, man, and, and I just wanna say I love you, man. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> Last but not least. At least uh, I want to talk about the guy that recruited me here to Indian University. It's one of the best places I could have ever come. I mean, I love this place. Um, the fans, I mean, all through the years, you know, because I, I didn't really think I did enough to be in the Hall of Fame. You know, that, that's just my personal views. You know, but I mean, it's still a blessing. You know, the fans used to, you know, all through the years used to always come up to me and say, oh, Landon, you did this, you did that, you're so good, you're so good. I was like, well, I sat in the, I sat in the doghouse for almost the whole season. <laughs> I said, I had to take advantage of my opportunities. <laughs> you know, but I just, I just want to, I just want to thank all the uh, Indiana University fans. I mean, you have always been there for me. You've always been positive. And I just want to say, I love you all too. I just want to say, I love all you fans. But getting back to uh, the guy that recruited me to Indiana, Indiana University. Uh, I remember my father, you know, he used to always watch the 76 team, the 75 team, 76 team. And he used to always say, Landon, come over here and look at the TV and look at this, look at this basketball team because, you know, I mean, they're, they're a great team. Look how they set screens. And, and every time they shoot, they, they basically land the ball up. You know, they, they work well together. And I'm up there looking at it. I'm like, man, that's kind of boring, man. <laughs> I want to get out and run. I mean, look at these dudes. They, I mean, they hold the ball for almost seven minutes. I mean, boy, thank goodness they had a shot clock came eventually. They hold the ball for the whole game, get, get ahead. I was like, I, I was like, that wasn't exciting to me. It just wasn't exciting to me, but my father was like, boy, they, these guys play great. And so when it, when it came time to be, you know, being recruited by different colleges from all over the country, you know, uh, Coach Knight, you know, he came to the house, and I didn't realize he was that tall. I'm like, man, this dude is tall. You know, so he'd come to the house, and, you know, my mother would always give him some orange juice. You know, I bet that dude didn't have a cold all year. You know? <laughs> I mean, she just kept orange juice in his face. I'm like, Bobby, orange juice? I'm like, dang, go on. Let the dude talk. But anyway, my mother was just being sweet and being hospitable. But, um, you know, so I made a decision to come to Indiana University and uh, came to Indiana University. I knew it was going to be hard, and... And it was hard, you know, there were several times that I uh, thought about quitting and when I, thought, when I thought about quitting, I would go to Mr. Ray Tober's room and Ray would pull out his bass guitar and, you know, play a few tunes. I'm like, I'm like, I'm quitting. He goes, don't, 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 don't. I'm, like, I'm like, okay, well, let me see. do it again. Don't, 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 don't. I'm like, okay, I think, okay. And then he would, then he would convince me, say, man, Landon, please don't leave. So, so I didn't leave, but you know, every year he would have to pluck that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> but Coach Knight has been tre a tremendous, you know, friend. You know, I kind of, you know, me and him had some difficulties at first and everything, you know. And uh, but once I, once I was in, you know, I found myself in the hospital, you know, with a spinal cord injury. You know, I saw another side of Coach Knight that I, you know, never knew. I mean, I finally saw, he, I finally realized he had a heart. I didn't know this dude had a heart at first, believe me. <laughs> so, but I mean, he went out, I mean, he went out tirelessly. He went out and raised, raised over $500,000 for the Landon Turner Trust Fund, which, you know, helped pay for this wheelchair and helped pay for things to deal with, you know, my hospital bills. And, and I, just, you know, I just saw a side of him that, you know, I never thought that in my life that I would say that I love, love you, Coach Knight. I really do. And... Um, I know I probably talked over my seven minutes, but anyway, I, you know, I just want to say uh, the last thing I want to say, um, I am just proud to be a Hoosier and I'm going to be a Hoosier for the rest of my life. And I love Indiana University and go are you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to get my legs together. My legs are still long. I'm a, I'm a